So can you share too much online and what impact is it having on our real lives? Joining me now is Rachel Burrows from Netmums and psychologist Linda Papadopoulos. Rachel, I know it's been a big talking point on Netmums today. Uh, what are your members saying? Yeah, we had a story yesterday um, about a mum posting on Facebook and she received an anonymous letter um, from another mum complaining about the oversharing and, yeah, we don't want to see every minute of your baby. Our babies are special too. Yes. Um, which, Can't you just stop being friends? Isn't yeah, that, and, easy? and you that can... Easy? Yeah, well, you can just unfollow. So we, we had it on our site and, you know, and it was the really hot... It was one of our hottest topics. Mm. Um, all our members were talking about it. You know, there's um, a range of views, but, you know, you can just unfollow... Um, yes. You don't have to. And it's it's only natural, you know, becoming a parent is the biggest, biggest change. You're going to be, you're going to have so many proud mummy moments. I know I've and done daddy the same. Moments. Yeah. yeah I, I still feel guilty. We didn't take enough pictures of the second child. Oh, but, same you know, here. It kind of tails off a bit. The thing is, coming, back, coming to the psychological aspect of this, Linda, why do people feel the need? Because I think the way that we uh, understand our relationships and our connections to others has changed quite significantly over the last couple of years. It's, it's that, you know, I was thinking about that old adage of a tree falls and there's no one there to hear it, you know, does it make a noise? If, you know, if your baby smiles and, you know, you don't post it and no then one it acknowledges that it happened. Yeah. Okay. And because we're living our lives very much in this sort of sense of, you know, on a serious note, almost in this, you know, we're standing outside of our lives looking in. So I'm not actually looking at my baby smiling. I'm thinking about what you guys will think of when the baby smiles. So if I don't post it. Even that, you know, that, that guilt, that which is this kind of odd thing that you spoke about now that we all understand about the second baby, we almost feel it constantly, right? What is the best coping strategy then for people who are being deluged with this stuff? Is it to write an anonymous letter saying, look, calm down? <laughs> no, I'm, you know, the great thing about social networking is there are ways of, of, of not necessarily having these things on your timeline with most things so you don't have to see it. I would say that if someone's close to you and they're a friend, I would say, you know, maybe it's better, you know, sharing things with people that, you know, that really want to hear that are face to face. It's such a delicate situation. You also have to remember that moms, new moms, probably have a lot of free time on mm. their hands. I can imagine them yeah. being up late at night with nothing to do, kind of <laughs> posting, you know, with, with wanting the to share with the outside world. Yeah. But the thing, the thing is, Rachel, just to finish it off, you know, it's, it's one thing how it affects moms. But what about their children as they grow into teenagers? This, this is their whole life. They've never known anything else. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, the digital. I mean, it's concerning, but it is, a, it's, you know, the internet is an amazing thing. And, you know, social media, if used in the right way, you know, is, is, is amazing for the for the kids. But you just need to, you know, we need to have, you know, good conversations with our children Absolutely. about, you know, what you see online. You know, people are represent, you know, trying to portray their, their lives in the best that they can be. Do it all in the round. Thank you both very much for coming.